Yeah, it's a pretty big operation now. Six bays, ten mechanics, about 30 cars come through here a day. But it's taken a long time to build it up. When I first started out pumping gas, all I had was a little hoist on the side. Back then, we were doing mostly oil changes. Maybe we'd do a tune-up. Every so often, we'd even do a brake job. But then about, oh, I guess it was five years ago, we moved here. I bought out the old owner and, well, held my breath. But it's all working out fine. We do a lot more things here now. We do tune-ups, engine work, brake jobs. Some of them, like replacing a muffler, haven't really changed much over the years. But others, like doing brake jobs, have really changed a lot. Brake jobs are pretty high-tech now. But just a few years ago, we did them real simple. Just take a look at these snapshots from the old shop. We did a lot of things wrong back then, and this was probably the worst of them. Now, the first thing I tell every one of my mechanics is, don't blow it. Don't blow it is right, because that dust can be deadly. Using an air hose like this is now illegal. You see, most brake linings contain asbestos. Asbestos is a durable, high-friction, fibrous material that makes it useful for brake materials and a lot of other applications. But it's precisely this indestructible quality that makes it so dangerous. For when it gets ground into a fine dust by repeated friction in braking, or when a mechanic grinds down brake linings, it can easily be breathed in. And that's when it can do its damage. Millions of dust particles can be released during brake and clutch servicing, and the largest of the visible clumps aren't the real problem. It's the microscopic, invisible fibers that enter the lungs, which can do the most damage. Inhaling these asbestos fibers can cause cancer, lung cancer and a fatal cancer of the lining of the lungs or abdomen called mesothelioma. Even breathing in these asbestos fibers for short periods of time may cause cancer, and symptoms of these cancers take many years to develop, 15 years, sometimes 20 or 30 years or more. You can't tell that you're breathing it in, and there's usually nothing to indicate it's hurting you at first. And it may harm you, even if you're doing a short job or two, even after you have stopped working with it. Asbestos fibers can also cause the lungs to form scar tissue. This scar tissue isn't elastic like the lungs are. Too much asbestos, too much scar tissue, and it gets harder and harder to breathe. This scarring is called asbestosis. Unfortunately, the scar tissue doesn't turn back into good lung tissue, so the disease doesn't get better once it develops. The more asbestos you breathe, the greater your chances of developing this scarring. So the time to control asbestos is now, when you first start working with brakes, when you're feeling fine. And even if you've been exposed to asbestos, you can still take steps to protect yourself. The most important thing is to prevent exposure in the first place. And the best way to do that is with the equipment that Mike here is using. The enclosure, the vacuum canister, and the other equipment all work together in what we call the enclosure vacuum method. Now, you've got to use that equipment right, or it won't protect you. Check that the hose is securely fastened at both ends. Also check that the vacuum containers, seals, and clips are set up according to the manufacturer's instructions. Turn on the asbestos vacuum. This way, loose dust will be sucked up from the start, rather than allowed to get into the air. Place the enclosure over the drum, then pull it forward, making sure that it forms a tight seal behind the backing plate. This tight seal will ensure that the asbestos dust is sucked into the vacuum and doesn't leak out into the garage. Stick your hands in the gloves and remove the drums. The gloves will keep the asbestos off of your hand. Some of the equipment is even large enough to use a hammer inside the enclosure. 
use the air gun inside the enclosure to blow dust off the drum and brake assembly. Blow the dust towards the vacuum exit. Make sure all of the dust is vacuumed up. Only then, remove the enclosure and turn off the vacuum. Then Mike can continue as he normally would. As you can see, it doesn't take much longer to do it the right way than it does to do it the old way. And it has one really big payoff. It can save your life. You handle disc brakes pretty much the same way. Be sure to vacuum the disc pads, rotor, and caliper directly with the attachment, and don't handle them before you vacuum. The procedures are a little different for a clutch job, but you have to use the equipment right, or you'll end up breathing the asbestos dust. There's another way to cut down on the asbestos dust when you're cleaning brakes. It's called the wet collection method. With this method, the mechanic uses a specially designed system with a low pressure spray gun to collect the dust and prevent it from spreading around the garage. But the people I talked to before buying our systems told me that wet methods in general are not as good as the vacuum enclosure method. So I decided on the vacuum enclosure method for my garage. Some of the things we used to do in the old days were totally useless. In fact, downright dangerous. Wiping with a rag or brush doesn't effectively control dust, no matter how carefully done. Even wetting these tools doesn't work. They eventually dry out, and then when you handle it or shake it, the asbestos is spread around the garage. Using a liquid squirt bottle or a garden hose or a solvent spray actually spreads the asbestos, and when the liquid dries, the asbestos is still all over the garage. Vacuuming up with regular shop vacuums doesn't do any good. They don't have filter bags that can trap the really small fibers, the most dangerous ones. They can actually spread the asbestos around the garage as much as the compressed air hose. Remember, these small fibers are the ones you want to avoid. Speaking of filters, that's what makes the system work. And the guts of the system is the HEPA filter. That stands for High Efficiency Particulate Air Filter. And that's the only kind of filter that can trap the really small asbestos fibers that are so dangerous. Replacing these filters on time is very important because they're the guts of the system. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions. The best equipment is set up so you can change the filter or the collection bag while the vacuum is running. This sucks the fibers away from you and into the machine. Ahead of the HEPA filter are two or three others. This one in the middle is called a microfilter. It traps some of the smaller fibers, but not the smallest ones that the HEPA filter gets. Remember, these filters collect asbestos. That's their job. So when you go to change them, they're full of dangerous dust. That can make filter and collection bag changing a really hazardous job. As you can see, in our garage, we even wear special clothing for extra protection when we change the filter and collection bag. So change filters and collection bags carefully and correctly according to manufacturer's instructions. It doesn't do much good to avoid asbestos exposure while cleaning the brakes and then spread it all over the garage when you're changing the filters or collection bag. All filters and asbestos waste must be handled carefully to avoid spreading asbestos dust. They must be put directly into a heavy plastic bag, double tied, and put into a separate 55 gallon drum. The drum is kept stored and locked between filter changes. Using the vacuum enclosure system and properly replacing the filters are the most important things in making sure that asbestos exposure is as low as possible. But we do a few other things around here just to be safe. 
We keep the lunch area separate from the work area, and I never let any of my mechanics eat or drink anything while they're doing a brake job. And we always wash our hands carefully before we eat. Look, nobody wants to swallow any of that stray asbestos. We keep our street clothes separate from our work clothes, and our work clothes are specially laundered. Now, this may seem like a small thing to you, but a magazine article I read recently said that some scientists found that wives and children of men who work with asbestos were getting cancer. And they got the cancer from the dust that the men were bringing home on their work clothes. Now, we keep our asbestos levels really low here. But the last thing that I want to worry about is my wife and my kids and my mechanics, wives and kids being in danger. So the few extra bucks in laundry bills are worth it. One more thing. I don't allow any of my mechanics to smoke while they're doing a brake job. And if they do smoke, I strongly encourage them to stop. I used to smoke. Oh, and I knew all the arguments against it. But the one thing that convinced me to stop smoking is this chart over here. Now, we all know how dangerous smoking is. And I hope by now you know about asbestos, too. But there's one thing that's more dangerous than either of these. And that's their combination. Here, take a look at this. This is the risk of getting lung cancer if you don't smoke. And we all know that smokers get a lot more lung cancer. And so do some asbestos workers. But look at this. If you smoke and you're exposed to asbestos, your risk is five times worse than if you only smoke. And it's ten times worse than if you're only exposed to asbestos. Not only that, but it's 50 times worse than if you don't smoke and you're not exposed to asbestos. Like I said, this chart convinced me to stop smoking. And it even convinced some of my mechanics, too. The way I figure it, I either quit smoking or I quit this business. In the past, some garages have used dust masks or respirators during brake work. But respirators, which use filters to remove asbestos from the air as you breathe it, are not as effective as those which supply clean, pressurized air, like underwater scuba-type equipment. And using such equipment properly requires a whole separate program, including special training, medical evaluations, maintenance. But the scuba types of respirators just aren't practical in a garage like Frank's. Respirators with HEPA cartridges can be worn while changing the vacuum filter and collection bag, but only as a precaution against asbestos getting stirred up by accident. In no way are these respirators ever to be used as a substitute for using the right equipment and proper procedures. And even the best respirator will not help others in and around the garage, like customers, supervisors, and other mechanics who are not wearing them. And if you wear them but still spread brake dust around the garage, you'll still be exposed when you take the thing off. So the best approach is to collect and control brake dust and prevent its release into the garage. As you can see, Frank's been pretty thorough in setting up his brake operation to avoid exposure to asbestos. But he knows that the best equipment in the world is no good unless his mechanics know how to use it properly so he makes sure that they get the necessary on-the-job training. And he insists that they follow the manufacturer's instructions to the letter. Remember, asbestos is dangerous stuff. How dangerous? Well, the federal government is proposing to phase out its use entirely. Anyone who works with asbestos, especially if they don't use the right equipment and the right procedures, is at risk. And the fact that you can't tell when you breathe it in, and it doesn't make you feel bad, makes it even worse, because you're not aware of the danger. But it's there, and it can catch up with you. Years after you leave a particular garage, and even years after you stop being a mechanic. I don't only own this garage, I work here. I want to treat my people right, and I want to protect myself. What you've heard today could save your life. Make sure that the garage that you work at 
has the right equipment and the right procedures. You know what I mean. Don't blow it.